Um, what I'm going to talk about today is the Internet of Things, which since you're at an IoT meetup, I suppose I don't have to spend a whole lot of time on that. And I'm also going to uh, introduce you to ARM's Embed IoT device platform. The agenda looks like this. Give you just a uh, brief overview of ARM, talk about IoT, look at some use cases, um, talk about some of the key IoT markets and applications, and then finally wrap up with um, a couple comments about the ARM embed ecosystem. So hopefully most of you are familiar with ARM, but we are a global leader in semiconductor IP. In fact, all of you use ARM every day. ARM has 95% market share in the smartphone and tablet processor market. Likewise, 85% market share in computing application processor market. 75% of the world's <coughs> population is touched by ARM technology. ARM enjoys 50% market share in the IoT radio MCU market, 30% growth rate in the ARM MCU and smart card market, 26% market share in IoT MCUs generally. Since the founding of the company, 60 billion ARM-based chips have been shipped. Last year alone, 12.1 billion chips were shipped. That means not necessarily 12 billion products were shipped because there are multiple, uh, often multiple MCUs in a single product, but nonetheless, quite a few. We have 1,100 signed ARM licensees. We have 300 semiconductor partners including Admel, and Forbes ranks ARM as the third most innovative company in the world. I'm proud to be part of ARM, and frankly, had they not acquired my company, they would have never hired me. Um, so I'm fortunate to be here. But what is, I, what is IoT? Basically, we're connecting physical things with web services. We're also introducing innovative new business models. All sorts of sensors and actuators are going to be connected to the cloud, and then all that data that is streamed to the cloud can be used by applications. IoT is not, in my definition, the same as M2M. M2M is more vertically focused or siloed whereas IoT is bringing all the data to the cloud and then allowing any application with the appropriate permissions to use that data. This chart gives our perspective of um, the IoT space and what ARM is doing in this domain. First of all, the title of this slide really is a message that is common throughout ARM. Little data enables big data. Everyone knows about big data, but big data isn't going to exist without the little data that's going to be driven by all of the devices that are connected to the cloud. Um, we are offering two products. One, is the embed OS indicated here. This is a free, completely free, and open source operating system designed from the ground up for IoT applications. It is not a real-time OS. For hard real-time applications, you will continue to use things such as free archives. But for everything else, particularly the very small, largely battery-driven devices, um, 
of real time on OS is overkill. So we are now in alpha release of the embed OS. Beta release is planned for early August and production software in November to be coincident with TechCon, which is ARM's annual trade show in Santa Clara. Obviously, making a product free is a challenging business case. So how is ARM going to make money? We also have the embed device server. This is a commercially available product today. It's being used widely. It is um, licensed, the license model or the revenue model, or the business model that we use varies depending upon our customer. We try to adapt our business model to our customer's business model. Some of the benefits of the embed OS and the embed device server, the things that we're emphasizing are connectivity, end-to-end -end security, device management as well as data management, and rapid development of new applications and services. Most people know ARM from the smartphone market, from the mobile market, mobile device market. Um, the IoT market is going to be very different. As is um, expressed on this slide, the IoT value chain is much more complicated. Um, it's going to require collaborative effort amongst all of the value chain participants to bring value-added products and services to market. Interestingly, Gartner said that within a few years, half of all the IoT solutions will be provided by companies that may not exist today. So the growth opportunities in the IoT space are phenomenal and the opportunity for new companies, new startups, is likewise very keen. Um, I personally have a passion for startups. Um, after Qualcomm and Ericsson, I spent 10 years working in a series of startups, some of which did and some of which didn't. Um, and my most recent startup was Sensenode, which thankfully had a successful exit with ARM. And I wish all of you similar success. So looking at the embedded world, I thought we'd go back a few years. During the Apollo program in the 60s, it was the leading edge technology driver. In fact, the Apollo program for many years in the mid 60s was the largest consumer of integrated circuits in the world. Look at what this computer, this guidance computer for the Apollo program consists of. It's huge, it's got a two megahertz clock, ROM and RAM, 55 watts of active power, and the thing weighs 29.5 kilograms, 30, close to 30 kilograms. Let's look at today's MCU market. This is a golf ball. That's an MCU. And this MCU has a 48 megahertz clock. Lots of RAM, or the necessary ROM and flash and RAM. Very, very, very low power. Down to one milliamp sleep mode. Imagine what you can do with MCUs like this from ARMS partners. And ARMS partners in the MCU space consist of all 10 of the top 10 MCU manufacturers. Looking at the IoT space, what are going to be the key drivers, the key enablers? Clearly, it's going to be tiny, low-cost sensors. 
secure, standardized internet interfaces, went to the edge, went to the tiniest devices, authentication and trust. From our perspective, security is essential. Without, without trust, the internet of things is not going to happen. There must be universal data model semantics, and there must be easy and open development. As shown here, um, by one projection, there'll be 26 billion units, installed units, by the year 2020. If anything, that's an extremely conservative projection. You've seen um, published projections of 40 million by 2020, 50 million by 2020. Um, no matter what the number is, it's likely going to be too low. We do believe that anything that can be connected will be connected. I'd like to modify that and say anything that should be connected will be connected. Um, and what, what's going to drive that? Right size processing for new markets, delivering more performance with less power. Most of these, many of these, most of these applications are going to be for battery driven devices. Um, power consumption becomes a huge issue. And then finally, delivering time and innovation advantage. ARM is focused on many, or group, ARM processors are found throughout these various um, verticals. ARM itself is focused on three. We're supporting all verticals and certainly ARM processors the embed OS and the embed device server are designed, the last two are designed as horizontal platforms and are usable in any vertical. But like any company, we have finite resources. So we're focused on three verticals. One is the smart home or connected home. Another is basic wearables. And the third is smart cities. You can see at the bottom ARM Cortex processors as well as ARM, and ARM embed solutions uh, across all of these verticals. Everything will be connected. Um, as I mentioned earlier, ARM today has 24, 25% market share in MCUs and smart cards. Um, our technology, our MCU technology, is being adopted for virtually, for most if not all IoT applications. Um, today, there are over 3,500 different ARM-based microcontroller chips available from our semiconductor partners. One of the things that's gonna drive the growth in the IoT space is the decline in the price of hardware. Um, in 2012, a typical or average eight selling price for an ARM M0 MCU was 49 cents. In 2016, next year, that will decline to less than 30 cents. And I'll emphasize the less than. Um, the price of hardware is coming down dramatically. And likewise, the other hardware indicated here, Wi-Fi chips are coming down, Bluetooth, uh, sensors, camera chips, as well as the GPS. Hardware efficiency is important. Um, what you can accomplish is going to be dictated by the type of processors you use as well as the software. Um, you're going to want to have the maximum intelligence down to the smallest device. And with ARM's M-class processors, you have remarkable performance, extreme cost or extreme power conservation in a very small and cost-effective package. 
This is going to be especially, especially important for the wearable space. One thing to mention on this slide is that wearables particularly, the bulk is going to be a function of the battery size. Battery technology is not quite keeping up with the learning curve in the MCU space. There are a wide spectrum of devices to choose from. These are representative boards. Um, and you can see the size related to a penny. These are some of the supportive boards. I asked about developers before. Really, the IoT space, in our opinion, is all about developers. Um, in the 1990s, it was about assemblers. In the 2000s, C, and moving forward, it's going to be about platforms and APIs. There's going to be a diversity of uh, products, IoT products brought to market, and they're going to need a common framework for communications. And that's what Embed, Embed OS and Embed Device Server can bring to the party. You may have seen an announcement around Embedded World in uh, late February. Um, ARM and IBM introduced a co-branded um, IoT starter kit. Pictured here, uh, the board came from Freescale. Uh, so this particular board is Ethernet connected. Uh, it's got a Freescale Cortex M4. You can buy it uh, through distribution or online. You can literally hook up and connect and visualize data in five minutes out of the box. Um, looking forward, there are other starter kits such as this that are in the pipeline. You'll see a variety, including, I hope, one from Watt.io in the near future. Um, there'll be other IoT starter kits coming out shortly that will be wireless enabled, connecting to their Bluemix and IoT foundation platforms. And as I said, um, there's been tremendous amount of interest amongst mm, virtually all of our cloud partners to bring similar products to market. Another interesting activity or initiative that ARM is involved in, which you may have not seen in the US, is the um, BBC Microbit. This is a program uh, that was launched by the BBC they are building one million of these boards and they are going to be distributed free of charge to school children in the UK. The purpose is to jumpstart innovation, develop a new, new era of developers. It's a really creative idea and kudos to the BBC. Um, there, we have a number of partners that are working with ARM on this, including Microsoft, um, the, many of the devices are coming from Nordic Semiconductor. Um, it is an exciting program, I hopefully just one of many that we'll see throughout the world. So uh, talking a little, bit, a little bit about use cases. Um, as I mentioned earlier, ARM is focused on three verticals, one of which is a smart home. Um, we believe that you know, the consumer market generally drives volume in every, in every case, and um, home appliances, connected home, uh, are going to take off. Wi-Fi is going to be common um, in, the, in the home, and also a new technology called Threat. Um, how many of you have heard about Threat? The thread spec will be introduced in June, it'll be mid-June, mid so next month. Thread is a new uh, protocol, networking protocol, that's been designed specifically for the home market. Uh, the Thread Foundation, there are seven founding partners, including ARM, obviously. Um, 
Google Nest, Samsung, uh, Silicon Devices, and Freescale. Um, Thread is going to enable interoperability among all devices in the home. Um, again, here, one emphasized connectivity, need for absolute security, and then the ability of the embed device server to provide both device management as well as data management. The average family of four, according to the OECD, in the year 2020, will have 50 interconnect connected devices. That might be a low estimate for some homes, uh, but a really interesting number. This assumes two teen teenage children. Um, hard for me to believe that there's only gonna be 50 connected devices in that home. But it is indicative of the growth potential in the connected home or smart home market. So what else is going to be connected in the home? Smoke alarms, security cameras, smart meters, toys, lighting, the list goes on. There's expected to be a billion installed smart meters by the year 2020, 25 billion smart appliances shipped, 12 um, million home automation system the shipping by 2017. This chart is just a graphic that shows uh, the applications for the aforementioned thread. Um, if you're interested, let me know and I can provide you some more information uh, on thread. Arm in the connected home, uh, this is just indicative of some of the um, products where Arm MCUs are used. Um, here you can see a uh, microcontroller that's used in a um, Nest-like device. There's also Arm processors in Zigbee Radio and in this case in the Apps processor. I mentioned wearables was another of the uh, verticals that were focused on um, low power um, devices driven by ARM um, MCUs and using embed OS are going to be common. Um, they will typically connect to a Bluetooth, using Bluetooth to a mobile phone or a home gateway and then connect to the cloud. In the connected home will be the connected individual. Um, many of you already have health monitoring devices, um, Fitbits and what have you. Smart watches are coming. Many are already here. There'll be big baby, baby monitors, smart jewelry, mood rings, posture monitors. Um, expected to be 70 million uh, wearables shipping in the year 2017. ARM is widely used, in fact, probably close to 100% market share in the wearable space. Um, here you can see uh, ARM microcontroller that's used in the Fitbit. And a uh, comment here from uh, Jim Park, beyond the price and performance benefits, the engineering, engineering team enjoyed the code density offered by the ARM 32-bit part. I'm sure many of you saw uh, Baumgarten's fall or jump from space. Um, there are a lot of um, Go cameras um, attached and those Go cameras GoPro cameras are powered by ARM devices. Smart cities is an area where we have a tremendous depth. Um, we believe smart cities in terms of time to money is where a lot of companies will be focusing. Um, 
you can see many applications ranging from parking to electric vehicle charging, public transportation, energy management, power management, and what have you. Uh, one projection has a million smart parking spaces by 2020. That's likely also to be a conservative number. Street lighting um, is a, an area where we have a lot of experience. Um, the energy savings from both the switch to LED lamps as well as making these very intelligent is phenomenal. Also, the cost savings in terms of maintenance is non-trivial. Um, in this instance, we use a mesh network to mesh all the lamps together. Then there's 3G backhaul from a um, border router back to the cloud where the embed device server will sit and it's used to control all of the lamps in the city. Um, one example of this is GE's light grid solution. GE has deployed um, 4,000 street lamps in the city of San Diego, 7,000 street lamps in the city of Carlsbad, excuse me, the city of Oceanside, uh, which is also in San Diego County. Um, this solution is based on um, NARM software technology in the street lamps, as well as the embed device server controlling all of the lamps. This may be stretching the bounds of a smart city application, but we are working with SK Telecom in Korea on eel farming or fish farming or aqua farm farming. And they are using embed um, OS in all of the devices that are monitoring the aqua area. They're using um, the embed device server in the back end to control everything. Today, this is being used in one application, literally in the eel farm in Korea. Um, aqua farming, fish farming, is going to be a big industry, is a big industry, and SKT is very excited about taking this product um, to other, other markets. Another ARM partner is Megachips, and they're using our solution for um, livestock monitoring. Intelligent sensors attached to each of the um, livestock, each of the cattle. Uh, there's an access point, uh, various access points, and then backhaul to the cloud. So what are some of the key IoT markets and applications? According to Gartner, um, consumer or other consumer, uh, indoor lighting, smart TVs, various automotive applications will lead, lead the parade. All of these applications shown on this chart have greater than 1% market share. The second chart, also from Gartner, are applications that have, are expected to have less than 1% market share. In terms of connectivity solutions, um, we believe that um, Bluetooth Smart, formerly Bluetooth IP, is going to be the leading um, connectivity solution for certainly for connected home and wearable applications. Then I wanted to mention the Embed Partner Ecosystem. We launched Embed the embed, embed IoT device server at TechCon last October. We have basically four types of partners. You can be a community member, which you just go online and you sign up and you're instantly a member, there's no cost. However, there are three fee-based memberships. Uh, one for silicon partners, self-explanatory. Uh, another for cloud partners, 
which would be companies like Watt.io, um, as well as other service providers. And then ecosystem partners, which are everyone in between. Um, oops. The common thread among all the partners is we have a shared vision about openness and adherence to open standards. Um, we know open standards are necessary to enable scale and these embed partners are willing to collaborate with each other. And our intent is to enable the commercial deployment and rapid scaling of IoT devices and services. When we launched in October last year, we, these were our launch partners, including, as you can see here, Atmel, and the Silicon Partner layer, Watt.io as a partner in cloud services, and you can see a number of other generally household names that recognize the technical value of the embed OS and embed device server. Um, we had 26 partners at launch in October. We will have roughly 100 partners at TechCon this year, which is the first week of November. Um, so to close, let me just invite you to join Embed, either as a community member or if um, the value proposition resonates with you, you, feel free to talk to us about joining and taking advantage of the other benefits of being a paid Embed partner. So with that, thank you very much.